it's nearly your birthday. You're going to be 34. <laughs> 34. I know. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, I feel like when you get to 35, that's when it's like, wow, I'm nearly 40. <laughs> no. You're just on the other side, aren't you? Like, creeping up. I know. Is that... You're not in your early 30s anymore, you're in your mid 30s. Mid 30s. And it's funny because remember, we was growing up, we, I mean, obviously, we, we always have the same birthday for a couple of weeks. Sorry, the same age for a couple of weeks. So, like, we've both been 33, at, that crossover at the yeah. same time. It's actually quite mad, that, isn't it? I know we spoke about it before because mum had us so close in age. I think, is it called Irish twins? Irish twins, yeah. Irish twins. But anyway, so how have you been? What have you been up to? How's the house? Well, I feel like we should probably start with you because you're sitting here and you're glowing and you've got the loveliest tan. <laughs> and I know you only got back, was it not yesterday, the day before? So you're yeah, fresh off the island. So tell us Fresh everything. from the island. <laughs> oh, gosh. Do you know what? It actually felt like I was away forever. I think because yeah. there were so many things. Obviously, we was away Christmas Day, New Year, and then like, well, up until when I got home, uh, not yesterday, the day before. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a long time, but it was so lovely. Like, we had the best time. Like, I really, really enjoyed myself. You know, like, I just think there's something about the Maldives for me. And obviously, we went back to the same island that we got married at this time. Yeah. So I think I texted you and mum, didn't I? When we got to the island... I didn't like, because we, we went away with um, Greg's mum, her husband, and then Greg's sister, yep. her husband and the kids, and then like loads of friends and, you know, um, yeah, lots of different friends sort of joined like later along the holiday, like coming and going. But um, when we got there, I I felt so emotional. It was like this overwhelming, like obviously that it's a long journey anyway, but I think it was like being back there, so many memories there and of course. so many good times. and. It was like, I could have burst out crying. I actually went, when we got to our room, I went in the toilet and just had like a little moment. Yeah. And they were like, because otherwise the kids would have been like, why are you crying? But also like so many amazing memories for you, especially you and Greg, because you got married there. But also as well, I think a lot of memories might have come back for you because of Nanny Wendy and Granddad Mick, because that was the last big holiday we all had together and they had the best yeah. time ever, didn't they? So I guess that probably played a part in it. It really did. And like there were so many places and things that we was doing across the holiday and we was there. And it just, it really reminded me of them yeah, so much. Of Obviously like all happy memories, but also yeah. like just like emotional, isn't it? But no, we had a really good time. So how was the weather? Because I know that there was like serious rain as well as sun. <laughs> I've never known it to be as rainy as that though there at Christmas. So when we got there, it was a bit, when we, no, when we landed, it, you know, like normally when you land in the Maldives, it's like bright blue sky sun. When we landed, it was almost like misty. Ooh. We was all like, oh dear. <laughs> right, anyway, so then we got to the island. Yeah. It was sunny, the sun was out, it was like amazing. Chatting away with the hotel manager and he said, oh, you're so lucky. He said, we've had 10 days straight of rain on the Ooh. island. This is the first sunny day. And oh I was my gosh. Like, oh my God. Anyway, I was like, oh, it's going to be fine. Anyway, we did have quite a lot of rain, considering, like, like you say, that time of year, it's usually like paradise, like blue skies, yeah. sunshine all day, every day. But we did have a few days of like rain and I think it got to, no, there was, there was, I think it was three days we had of like consecutive, like stormy weather. Yeah. And when it got to the third day, we was all like, no, nah, we've had enough. This is, because the thing is, when you're in the Maldives and it rains, what do you do? Yeah. Right? You've got the kids with you as well. So, like, one day in the afternoon, we was like, we've had enough. Let's go to the bar. Yeah. Let's go to the bar. Right. And we just had a really fun afternoon. And we all ended up doing, like, swimming races in the pool in the rain. And we had, like, a few drinks. But when you've got the kids with you, there's only so much of that you can do, really. Yeah, of course. But also, it's like, because it's, it's an island, there is, you can't, like, you don't leave the islands. There's not much you can do. Apart from no. make use of what you've got around you, which I guess in a way is quite good because you had to like think out the box. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, we we was that's we and and then there was like this other like there's this big bar there and there's all like board games. So we was all like doing the board games. Yeah, we, we all like had a turn in the spa. Um, oh, the kids were like 
One day, Nelly and Arthur was walking back to the room, and it, you know, like when it rains in the Maldives, yeah. it pours. It's yeah. not like a drizzle. It's like the sky has opened, and they they just went mad, and I was just laughing. Yeah, I just thought, let them do it. They were like jumping up and down, <laughs> and they were rolling around in puddles, and they yeah. were just going ballistic. You know, like <laughs> oh, it's nice though. Yeah, it was. And do you know what? Consider we was there. Obviously, I think we had sixteen nights on the island, and um, I mean, it did rain a, a, for a few of them, but most of the time we had like nice weather, yeah. a little bit cloudy most days, but um, but yeah, it, we did kind of have to think outside the box on the rainy days. Well, you have got a lovely t- suntan, it's making me look yellow sitting next to you. I've got like, it's been so cold here, like, obviously you know now you're back. Oh, don't. But do you know what? You've missed the rain, because we had like proper like, torrential rain, all my... My road was flooded. Really? We had trees down, so we couldn't get in. Paul and I couldn't get out of the house one day no. because all the trees were down right outside our house. It's been quite torrential, but now it's freezing, but at least the sun's out. You know, like when the sun's out, it's like, it doesn't yeah. matter as much. You've kind of missed it. My whole garden is like flooded. Yeah, so the rain has no been an issue, but it's nice now. You've brought the sunshine home with you. I know, I was going to say, it's here, it's like really blue skies and like really, it's cold, but yeah. you know, like a really nice winter day. Yeah, it's fresh. So how was the journey home? How was the flight? Tell us. Right, so the flight going there was, I'd say slightly easier, obviously it's a night flight, isn't yeah. it? So the flight going there was slightly easier with the kids um, because they slept for a lot of it. I had Margot sat with me the whole time and... To be fair, and so what we did, we split the kids up because Nelly and Arthur can't be in the same room, let alone next to each other. <laughs> <playing it. laughs> like they're just like we call we call them Tom and Jerry now because they're just <laughs> it's, honestly it's like cat and mouse. Anyway, so Nelly sat with me and Margot, and Arthur sat with Greg. Yeah, and um, yeah, so we split the kids up, and then it, it wasn't too bad. Like Margot slept for a lot of it. Nelly Nelly was as good as gold. Yeah, she's at that age now. She's just so easy to. Mm fly with i was like i could fly around the world with you now she just sits there and watches films and eats snacks but um, so easy. and then but coming home was i mean like absolutely fine but hard because it was a day flight yeah and we had a few scenarios where arthur wanted to sit with me and then nelly was arguing with him oh it was and then Margot, she did sleep a couple of times, but not... Yeah, they don't sleep for long, do they, on day flights? No, not really. And and there's, like, lots going on and clinking around and it's yeah. right, isn't it? So, and it's also longer flying home. So, I I mean, I, again, I had Margot most of the time with me. Greg had her about half... Like, Greg would just do the walking up and down the plane with her. Yeah. There's quite a lot of... um other parents with like babies and children on the flight and you know like when you're walking up and down you just sort of give each other like a yeah <laughs> a little smile a little yeah I know but you know what as well don't you think them really long haul ones you just look at the hours and then you think how have I got like eight hours left or oh seven hours honestly. left when it gets to two hours you're like yes that is exactly right yeah. so I looked at the the time at one point and it was still seven hours 36 minutes left and I was oh. like oh you know and you and we had to get up at 4 a.m that morning to oh, get on our boat to get to the airport so I looked at the time I was like so when it got to an hour and a half I was like yippee like I know you, know, like you get a spring in your step oh, and a bit yeah. of energy don't you you're like oh, you do yeah. you do I've had so many messages dms from um, people saying like, "How do you do the long haul flights? What what's the tips? What's the tricks?" There's not really anything you can do, is it? You just have to see it through. <laughs> you just, it, it's one of those things, right? And it's it is horrible. I just think it's not fun one bit. But I just took loads of snacks, just the yeah. usual things, snacks, toys. Although to be fair, Margot played with this plastic bottle. Probably oh, for a good damn. hour at one point. Do you know, point. like, on them long-haul flights as well, you can get those little cups in the bathroom. Those little cups yes. that you can drink. So I remember on one of my flights, I had got all the cups out, and Edward just sat. We had to go and sit in, like, basically where they make <laughs> food and drinks, but we the just teas, sat on the floor yeah. over there. And he had these cups, and it kept him going pr- practically the whole flight. So no matter what toys I'd bought or entertainment packs or whatever, all Edward wanted to play with was these little cardboard, like, cup things, but... You just do it. You just have to get through it. You do, you do. And and the thing is, it is so worth it. Like, I know it's it's a hard, long flight and you do 
play catch up for a couple of days when you get home. But um, I actually, so I went to put Margot on the floor at one point. I was like walking up and down, you know, in like sort of like there was like a big space. I put it down. Yeah. And one of the, um, a guy like one of the air hostesses or would you call a man air, ho air hostess? Air host? Anyway, he come running over to me. He was like, you cannot put her on the floor. I was like, why? I said, like, Why not? I need to put her down at some point. Like, she's got to stretch her legs a little bit. He was like, absolutely not. It's so dangerous. Get her up off the floor. And I literally just put her down for, like, 10 oh. seconds. You know, when you're like that, like, needing to stretch your arms a bit. I didn't know that. They said that in case there's a an air pocket or something, it's really dangerous. Like, if the flight dropped or whatever. So I was like, great. Back to my seat. You always see babies crawling around on the aeroplane. I know. But like they always have like yeah. a moment where they're crawling about or sitting, you know, you need to stretch their legs. Of course. I do get they that. They need to stretch their I legs mean, a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, I've got Rosie here. She's off school today. She's got bad tummy, haven't you, darling? Oh, darling. When they're not well, they only want mum, don't they? Of course. That's so true, isn't it? They just want to, you've almost got to like write yourself off for the day, haven't you, as well, and just like lay and cuddle no. them. No. She just wants to like lay and cuddle and watch Salmon Cat. <laughs> salmon Cat. Nelly used to you love want sa Salmon Cat. Go and put cat. Salmon Cat on. Mum introduced Salmon Cat to Rosie and Paul. I think they've watched the whole series oh, twice. Oh, but you're like, thanks, Mum. You know, it's it's uh, the annoying voice. Is it Ari it's Ariana Grande, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? You can do, it. do the impression of her. No, you're not well enough. Um, yeah, oh, and when it's on, I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's quite funny. I do get it. I get how they like it. Like, there's some funny bits in it, but gosh, they've watched the whole thing through twice now. So you're happy to be home? Yes. Do you know what? When, when we got through the airport, we got in the car to get home and I got in my bed. I was so excited to get in my bed because, you know, it's like, so where where we stayed, we had like a, a two bedroom beach house. So like yes, one I up, remember one down. Your wedding. Yeah. Yeah. So we had one of those, which was perfect, like great loads of space, but... It was like musical beds every night. And obviously where Margot's used to being in her own room on her own, it was a little bit up and down. Like, like you know, like I'd go to bed with one child and I'd end up in the bed with another child or yes. with Gregor. It was a bit like musical beds. And, yeah. And like, obviously where you're on an island, you know, like the kids, like sandy feet in the beds every night. You never really, like, I don't think you ever really do have a proper routine when you're on holiday. Not that I have one at home anyway, but... Like on holiday, it's, it's no. so up in the air because the kids go to bed late as well. Then you think, right, whoever's asleep, you just like carry them into their beds. Then you're moving beds throughout the night. It's, you know, it's just, you know, but, but, you know, when you get home, you get into your own bed and you're like, oh, there's nothing better. No matter where you are in the world, getting into your own bed is the best it's feeling. So, it's the best feeling. and But also on holiday, Margot still woke up at 6am every morning. So no, she didn't. We, oh my gosh. Yeah, 6 o'clock every morning. So... We wasn't having late nights, to be honest with you, because me and Greg every morning was sort of taking in turns. We was rotating, like, who gets up at 6am with her because she obviously, like, same sort of routine as at home, wakes up at 6 and then wants her breakfast by, like, 6.30. So every morning, like, me or Greg was, like, the early birds, like, first at breakfast by 7 and then... Like some some days, I felt like I was doing three rounds at breakfast. That's what I do. I was gonna say that's what I do. So I literally would always yeah. I always go breakfast with the ones who are up first. Usually the baby. Sometimes little Paul gets up early, and then it's like right the others are up, so I need to eat with them. And then I feel like I have I eaten, and then I'm like I need to actually sit and have a coffee and eat myself. So I could be yeah. at breakfast some mornings till like eleven o'clock, <laughs> and I've woke up at like seven. No, that's same. No, honestly, that was the same. I would start breakfast at seven and finish yeah. at ten. No, I was gonna say that's what holidays about, though, because never at home would you all be sitting around doing breakfast till eleven. Like, it's, you know, it's just no, be impossible. It's, it's so true. Like Greg would ring and then say Arthur's kicking off. He's because because Arthur then would wake up and see that I'm not there and I'm at breakfast. Then they think they're missing out on something. And yeah. then I'd be like, send him up. I'll be here. <laughs> but I do like that, though. It's, it's so nice about it. So do it. I. And, like, you know, like in the Maldives as well, like, I lit you literally don't wear... I mean, I not me personally, not everyone does this, but I do not wear shoes the whole time I'm there. Like, I no. wear no shoes. I love it. Walking around. You do not need just, them. Yeah. And you've done, you've done, like, a couple of weeks of pure grounding there as well. So you've recharged her whole body from grounding. grounding. Right, so... This is what I was going to go on to, right? So 
I was really like, I kept, Greg was getting so bugged out of me. So anyone that would like come and join the, like we obviously had quite a lot of friends there, family. I'd be like, oh, like, I, I was almost getting a bit judgy for people wearing yeah. flip flops, right? Get your shoes and off. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'd say like, what? Oh, what? oh, I think it's better to wear no shoes. Like, And um, in the end, everyone was like, like, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. And I went, you know, and, I, and Greg kept hearing me say, say it, you know, it's really good for grounding as well. Like, it's really good for like, for you, like, it's not to wear it shoes is. as well, right? It is. Recharges your body. And then, it's so good for you. Inflammation, it's really good for. So, and, and that's, I know it sounds mad, but I feel like that's probably as well, that contributes towards why I feel so relaxed and chilled out in the Maldives. The only country in the world, I mean. Honestly, of course it does. Yeah, but also vitamin D. Like, sometimes I'm in the car, even like winter, because obviously we've got such short days because it's so dark. I open the car window and I look up at the sun like that from trying to get my vitamin D in because I'm yeah. like, I need some energy. I've got no, had no sleep. And I'm like, I'm getting some in my eyes here. It's really bright. Speaking no shoes, I've been going to the gym. I actually started before Christmas. So I wanted to get ahead of the game for Jan. And I find it so much easier in the gym doing strength without shoes on, without the trainers. Do you? That's interesting. Oh, it's so much better. What, like weights and stuff? So all weights, not like a cardio class, but like weights, when you're just sort of walking around doing, you know, all different weight stuff, or even like the TRX and things. I find no shoes is so much easier, because like, if you think, right, your foot's got all the different bones and muscles in it to support every movement that you make. So when you've got trainers on, I feel like you're limited because your foot is in a trainer. Whereas when your feet are on the ground and you're like lifting weights and doing things, your feet are like adjusting to everything your body's doing. Next time you do a weight class, do it without trainers on. I'm going to try that. I had my socks on, but it's so much easier. Like you, you've got more of a, you're more grounded. <laughs> you're more grounded. Like, more, yeah, you're yeah. More, more grounded. So go back to the no shoes, right? So anyway... Um, a few days before we come back, we're all, me, Greg, the three kids, we're all out on like our little decking bit. Yeah. Arthur got this little um, remote control speedboat from Father Christmas, so we're trying to set it up. Anyway, we're all like fluffing around and yeah. babies crawling everywhere, grabbing the boxes. Like everyone's sort of like getting the ump for each other, just trying to set this speedboat up, but everyone's <laughs> trying to be involved. Nelly drags a chair over, right, because she wants to see what Greg's doing. Arthur's going, no. Anyway, then I've stood up, I, mm. and anyway, I've stood up and I've stood back. It was honestly, it reminded, when I think about it now, it was like, you know in Home Alone, when yeah. Marv step is it Marv, when he ste <laughs> steps on the um, pin? The, the now, yeah, I think so. The now, sorry, the now, that was me. I was like, yeah, was right. <laughs> and I literally, Ugh, I fell to the floor, started. right? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I can't laugh. We'll go on to that in a minute, my... my Oh, I'll tell you after. Go oh, on, carry on. It's oh, so, it hurts so much for a laugh. Go on. Oh, man. So I, I fall to the floor in like a ball. I, and I was like, oh, like everyone was like, what? What's happening? Greg's like, what's happening? Where Nelly's dragged the chair on the deck in, it's pulled up wood, right? Oh. So I've looked around to see what I've stepped on. It's oh, this big no. piece of pointy wood, but like that big. And where it's gone, so you know the bit between where you're, toe and your foot meets like that yeah. little tender bit there you know like Oof. say that's your toe and that's your foot yeah <laughs> it's gone st straight in oh, that no. right i'm like rolling around the floor but you know when you go weak greg can't look arthur won't look <laughs> nelly just run run off right greg won't look. why wouldn't that. greg look he was like i can't look i can't because i think they thought my toe had come off or something <laughs> anyway nelly bless her nelly so runs straight to reception and come back with a um some plaster. Was you crying or just shouting? I was I was like, oh, you know, you just like, you want to cry. I wanted yeah. to cry. It was sending pains up my leg. Like, yeah. Was bad? Anyway, Ooh. so I was so bugged out because for the rest of the holiday, you for, couldn't for be two grounded. days I was limping. I couldn't put any, and I had to put flip-flops on because all the sand was getting in the cut and yeah, I couldn't so... keep it clean. So in the end, Greg's like looking like, <laughs> Not grounded anymore, are you? I was like, shut up. But, um, oh, don't. That sounds Yeah, really no, it's just one of those. But it, when I think about it now, I was like, I actually was like Marv from Home Alone when he steps on that now. <laughs> Rolling around on the floor screaming. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I've, got, I've had an injury as well. So yeah. since been in the gym, I don't, I can't pinpoint what it, what it was because I never had like a pop or a ah moment. But I've basically... So yesterday I went to a specialist, like this muscle specialist, because it's been, this is like the sixth day now. 
I've torn my oblique, my left side. I've torn the muscle. And it's so, so painful. What is that? Is that a muscle in your So it's ribs? basically, yeah, it's like behind and under the ribs, like part of your abs almost. But it's under the rib. So like she couldn't even really do much for me. She was. She, you know, I was with her for an hour. But it, it basically, it's kind of attached. Mm. I think this is right. Attached to your um, res- respiratory. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, diaphragm. There we go. Um, diaphragm. And so basically every time I breathe in, like I have to do short breaths. When I breathe in, it's like a shooting, stabbing pain. So it's really painful. Well, she said like, you really need to rest and I haven't been resting. So it's been worse. And like sleeping at night has been really uncomfortable. But like the next few days, mum's coming later. So she's with me the weekend. So like things like picking up the baby and stuff is like a real strain. She's just putting sh- strain on it. Like she's like, you've got to think the muscle's torn. Anyway, so it's been really painful. But even like laughing then, like all of it, it's just like, oh, really hurts. But hopefully I'll be all right in a few days. If not, I'll have to seek more help. Yeah. At first I thought, was it a rib? But then when I was like touching all my ribs... I was like, actually, it can't be because my ribs aren't sore. It's definitely like internal. And so when it first sort of started coming on me, I thought, is it trapped wind? Because some people end up in hospital with trapped wind, don't they? Because they don't know what the pain is. <laughs> I'm not laughing, but no, I can I can totally get that. Like, because it can be really painful. And I, I was like, is it trapped? But I was like, it's really high. Paul's like, you can get it high. So he was massaging me. And then I was like, right, we need to do like what you do for <laughs> <Imagine>. a baby. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna lay on the floor. You need to lift my legs back. But we was really laughing. I was like, I'm oh too tense because even if I needed to fart, I wouldn't do it anyway. <laughs> so let's. Just... But anyway, it's not that. It wasn't. It wasn't. Weird. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been struggling this week to be honest. So you haven't been able to train then, I guess. No. Well, I, what I did was when I felt it first coming on, I was like, well, maybe it's just a strain. I best carry on and just take it easy in case it seizes no. up. But it's obviously made it worse. But I'm not going to train oh, now until next God. week. But anyway, yeah, I've got an I'm in, injured soldier too. Oh, it's not been very pleasant. That's really um, I hope it gets better. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so what else is going on? What are you doing this week, weekend? Well, the weekend I'm just going to... I'm not going to do much, actually. I'm just going to get organised. We actually start filming Ooh. for the new series of Family Diaries next week. Oh, wow. So it comes around so quick, doesn't it? Well, we've had the longest, we've had 11 weeks off, which is the longest break we've had probably in about 10 years. Oh my gosh. Usually only get four to six weeks, yeah. but it's gone so quick. I think where it was over the Christmas period, it's really flown by. So I feel like I need to kind of start getting myself a mm. little bit just organised and prepared for like the series ahead. And yeah, not of that you can be really, but. My, by the way, my office is so messy because I've had a major clear out. So it's like all charity shop stuff, like everywhere that I've got to, I've got to take down there. So I just feel like this weekend I'm going to really chill out. Oh, it's my birthday Monday. I know, birthday girl. And I'm How seeing you Tuesday, am I? aren't I? So we're going away. Well, we're going to do a night, aren't we, on Tuesday. So that'll be so exciting. Go on, let's tell everyone what we're, what we're doing. Yeah, so I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm really laughing because... Um, me and Greg was like, my birthday's a Monday in January. <laughs> it's oh. not exactly thrilling, is it? Oh, no. But I'm not. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on my actual birthday. Probably just something like maybe just do like a birthday cake. Someone get home with the kids on Monday. But Tuesday, I'm so excited because I've booked somewhere for me, Mum and Mamp to go, and we're gonna go there for the day and do like spa treatments. Have a nice walk, go for lunch, a few oh, cocktails, so I've got dinner booked. And yeah, it's just going to be really fun. And actually, where I've booked is somewhere that Mum and Mamp haven't been before. Mm, I'm really excited. I can't so, wait. Should be really fun. Be nice to catch up as well. And also, I am I know this sounds... doesn't sound terrible, actually. But I'm really excited to have a child-free break, a night off, because... You know, when you're on holiday as well, it's so intense. Yeah, day to night, <laughs> every single day. I'm you don't like, get like, I need a break. Yeah, you don't get one breather, do yeah. you? No, not a single breather. So that's what I yeah, am. Re- I'm really excited as well just to get away for the day and night. That's the point. Do you, what, what do you want for your birthday? Do you know what I was thinking? What I actually do need? Some new makeup brushes. 
I've had the same okay. makeup brushes. Oh, not not eyes. I think I need like a new blusher and like a okay maybe foundation brush or like a bronzer. Okay, I'll put that down the list. Idea. But I, I'm you know me. I'm I, I think I'm quite an easy person to buy for. So Greg Greg said to me last night, oh. Can you send me some links, please? Some ideas for your birthday. Yeah. I was like, yeah, sure. I've always got things that I see. I like. He come downstairs. He went to me. Are you for real? I was like, what? He was like, are you for real? What you sent me? I was like, well, I've given you options. I think he thought I meant like I wanted X, Y, and Z. All these things. <laughs> I was like, I've just given you some options. Like, I obviously don't expect it all. They just think you know, like when you see things when you're of browsing. Course, yeah. And you're like, oh, that's yeah, nice. You screenshot it or you just highlight it. It's hard, isn't it? Because it's like Christmas has just been, and if you want something, usually you just thing. buy it yourself. What do you need? So when someone buys you a gift, it, it's it's tough at this stage unless it's like something quite personal or that person has a really good idea for you. Like, oh, they definitely need this. Yes, you know? exactly. Um, hmm. But yeah, I'm really excited for that. So, oh, how's the house renovations going? I can't yeah. wait to come and see the house. Not bad. I've got um, the kitchen guys are back in today. Looks lovely where you're sat. So I'm in the office. Looks lovely and like tidy. It's empty. Unlike my room. I've got so like the the only thing is when you do like display in part of your office, you've got to fill it. So yes. now I'm a bit like oh, I've got like all this glass space and cupboards. Yeah, but this the cupboards is the I can fill. Part. I know. So now I've got to like accessorize everything. But the office isn't yeah. finished yet, actually, because I want a wallpaper. But it, you know, it, it's usable. Thankfully, I can actually sit here and record a podcast. Like yeah. the floors down, the desks are in. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so everything's coming on nicely. The downstairs bathroom's still not finished. Carpets were delayed before Christmas, so like all up the stairs and stuff, we still haven't got carpet. It like it's so lovely, and I'm loving it. But I'm, it's not finished yet. So when it's finished, I know that I'm going to be even like even more happy. Oh yeah. You know, is, well, I, I'm over a year in and there's still quite a lot that's not finished here. I think it just takes time. I really do think it takes time. And also, like, the next project will be my bedroom, so mine and Paul's room, and the dining room. So, like, there's rooms that we haven't completed, but most of it is done. You know, most, I'd say, like, 75% is done now. So, it's, yeah, it's exciting. But now yeah, I just need to, like, accessorise. It's going to be such a transformation. I know. I need to get, like, new bedding for the kids, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's going to be... I can't wait to come and see it. Just come whenever. Well, maybe try and Honestly. pop to you this weekend. Yeah, you should. Mum's here this weekend as well. We'll chat. I might try and come to you. Come over to you on Saturday. Let's make a plan, because you're obviously welcome whenever you want. And Mum's over this weekend as well. I think she's staying until Sunday. Okay. Um. So, right, have we got a dilemma? I feel like we have a dilemma. Okay. Hi, Summer Billy. I was hoping you could talk a bit about body confidence after having kids. I had my first baby in October 2023, and to be honest, I haven't thought once about my body since giving birth. But since January, all I've seen is weight loss ads and new gym memberships, and I feel like I should be starting to shift my baby weight. But at the same time, I also feel pressured to soak up every single second with my baby girl before I return to work. Do you have any advice for me? Um... So personally, I've never been someone that goes back to the gym after having a baby or trying to snap back or go on any kind of diet. Like, I just can't... I, I think you need to give your body a whole year before you even Absolutely, really start thinking yeah. about that kind of thing. I think it's like a good year and a half, two years to fully feel like you've got your strength and muscles and your abs back together again. Like, I just think you really, really just shouldn't rush into it you can obviously do exercise or light exercise you know keep yourself going a little bit but to think about getting like a beach body yeah I, I think we're both we're both definitely the same like that like since having Margot I didn't go back to, I didn't start training I wasn't ready to start training I was too mm -hmm. tired and exhausted and yeah you know just didn't I wasn't like in the right frame of mind until Margot was like eight months I think I started like maybe once mm. or twice a week doing a bit of training but I feel like as well at this stage like exercise or you know it, it, that should it should be more of like a almost like a self-care thing not because mm. you need to lose weight only because if it makes you feel good or gives you like an hour to yourself and like and gives you like a bit of energy or motivates you because yeah actually if she only had a baby in October 
that's the baby's so little still. I really wouldn't. You've got the rest of your life and the baby's life to get fit and toned. I think absolutely. This time is like it's not. Some everyone's different. Look, that's our that's our opinion, isn't it? I think now. I think the baby's far too young. Don't feel pressured about it. It's January, so everyone's always running around going to the gym, and even I am. But my baby's nineteen months old, you know, and when I do get that hour, like you said, Billy, I'm not doing it. I, like it's a different feeling when I train it gives me more energy believe it or not so like when yeah, I don't train same. I feel more sluggish so I'm like right by training mm. a few times a week for an hour and I only do strength classes that gives me energy and it's like I need this energy because like honestly the kids when they're at school and like the weekends are full of parties and activities and then you've got like pickups clubs Rosie has cheerleading gymnastics Paul's doing x y and z like you feel like you're driving most of the day when they're at school yeah like the school weeks do you know what I mean in between working and it's so it's like I need the energy and the gym does give me energy yeah completely no I agree mm. I think when I when I train I feel so much better like even after being on this holiday like I haven't done anything but swimming while we was away loads of walking but swimming and I literally I feel so sluggish can't wait I text my PT this morning saying I'm so excited to see you next week and get back to it but yeah again it, like you know Margot's now just over a year and I actually think the same thing like I you know last year I didn't feel at all back to my self no. at all even now, still, I don't. Even now, I'm like, it's, oh you gosh, know, it I takes don't. Time, doesn't I've, it? I'm, I'm still holding. Like, I, I think he's diet. I can't really probably blame that on baby, but I've still yeah, got that same bit of a t- tummy and saddlebags. <laughs> um, saddlebags. So yeah, don't feel the pressure. Okay, so should we go on to a couple of ask us anything? Did Paul book Sam's birthday trip all by himself, or did Sam give him some helpful hints? <laughs> um. Paul did book it all by himself, but there was a few hints along the way. So um, Paul and I went to stay in London for the night on New Year's Eve, which is my birthday. But but prior to that, we was only ever going to stay at home with the kids because obviously you just do. New Year's Eve's a bit rubbish, isn't it? When when you've got small children, it's not really anything you could do. Everyone's out partying. It's not really a a children's scene. And um, so I was saying to Paul, like, what should we do? Like, we could go and stay in London with the kids. Like, we could you know, or just stay at home and see the new year in at home. And if I'm honest, I wasn't that fussed. But what I did say to him was, let's do something in January then to celebrate. You know, I was like, let's do something. Because I feel like, because my birthday is New Year's Eve. And this isn't like, oh, where is me? I never do it for my birthday. <laughs> but we don't. No, but... I don't ever do anything for my course. birthday. And I don't, I'm not asking for like a big party. It's still your birthday. But, like, it, still got it, to celebrate. Nice. Yeah. It is nice to do something, even if it like is just something small. Anyway, so that was that. It was like, yeah, 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 we'll do something in January. So I was like, okay, fine, that's that's fine, we'll do that. And then the day before my birthday, he said, right, I've got my mum to babysit for the kids. We're going to go into London. So I was really excited because I wasn't expecting it at all. That's so good. So we'd spoke about it and then we'd said, right, we'll just do it in the new year. So uh, Gaina come over, she had the kids for us and we went into London we stayed in the new peninsula in uh, in town. Oh, it was so lovely. We had the night. We had such was a great really time. Good? Yeah, we just enjoyed the hotel. We went for dinner, and then there's a top. There's a bar on the top roof, and they opened up all the yeah. doors, and you could see all the fireworks, like you know, that big oh, London wow. firework display. It looked amazing in the photo. I yeah, love a surprise really nice. as well. You know, like yeah. some people don't like surprises. I I love surprises. Yeah, so it was a bit like he said. Mum's coming to have the kids. I've booked the peninsula. We're going into London. And I was like, no. I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. And obviously the kids don't really care so much about New Year's Eve. We wasn't doing anything major anyway. So I was like, oh, so I just was, it was really lovely. It was brilliant. We was in the spa. Was it, oh, hello. I was just talking oh, about you. Oh, so long. Nice. Yeah. Sorry, the kitchen guys are here. And they're doing a bit of snagging. But they're about to leave. And Paul's like, is there anything else before they leave? But there will be, because you know you forget, don't you? But also, um, he's um, he's so good. Like they, we we done this. They come back and they just and he's like snagging like a few months yeah. later. They come back because to until you're living in your kitchen and your cupboards and you're actually working, yeah. you don't you notice That's things so true, as the yeah. weeks go on, don't you? But anyway, they've come back and sorted loads out. And today. Do you know what's really funny? 
since you've just said that, it's reminded me that I've had to, I've just messaged someone that done some joinery here that I'm still waiting for it to be finished off. I'm like, can we get this done, please? It's only been oh, a gosh, year. We need to so get many things. Like we've had like new handles put in throughout the whole house. First of all, they're not what we chose, which is just... Oh, why? They're just It's just not what we chose. And they all went what in. In, this, in the, Like, the handle is exactly the same shape, but the actual finish isn't what we chose. So now I've got a whole house of handles, which took, like, a, a day. But obviously, they're like, oh, you know, they're in there, you can't be refunded. I'm like, but... But hold on. What, what, so did you not check it? Check one door? So the day... They would do it. They done it in a day, right? Ah, oh, when right, they done it. it. So you know they was doing it all. I was barely here. We're both in and out. There was about twenty five men in the house. So on the day it was being done, we didn't really notice it because it is quite similar. Anyway, when everyone left and we shut the door, me and Paul was looking at them, and he was like, "I hate to say it, but I don't think they're the ones we chose." I'm like, "They're not." <sighs> do you know you just like? But you're going to keep them. I don't really want to because they're not what I chose. I don't really like them. Oh, but who, so what was it, like a company that come and done Yeah, it? and there's proof, and there's there's proof of what we chose. So they just have to come, come and redo it, basically. They're going to have to, but there's already, like, a bit of a dispute going on. So I'm going to actually physically have to go and face-to-face and be like, come on. <laughs> it's just so much. Like, I need, do you know what, you, do you know what, when you're... When you're doing stuff like this, it's almost like you need a project manager to have them shitty conversations that you don't have to have. Do you know what? This is what we didn't have, and this, yeah, well, Greg almost give himself the title of project manager, and but we both was we both done it all ourselves. But then you're, but then you're, it's, it's a lot of stress for you. Like if it comes from somebody else, that person isn't really stressed out anyway because it's not their issue. They're just dealing with it for you because no, they're being paid to. They're just exactly. So it's quiet. Yeah, so, mm. I think renovating slash building a house is definitely one of the most stressful things yeah like you could you you would do like in 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 terms of that type of thing and also like when you spend so much money and it's your hard-earned money and you know it's your home that you want to make like yeah. perfect you know it's everything every single oh god chip or dent or ev- don't you everything like when you if someone else come into your house like when i come into yours i don't know it's any of that i just see it as a lovely home but when it's yours, yes. you literally see everything, don't you? Oh my god, yeah, completely. I I still go to bed now, like writing down on my notes, like little things that I need to get sorted in the house or things. Yeah, that same. Done, right? I have a pad all the time. Um, right, but anyway, okay. So should we do one more? Ask us anything. Yeah. Okay. I've always wanted to have Christmas abroad, but I'm worried about travelling with the kids' presents. Does Billy have any advice? One year, I was so stupid, I actually took a suitcase of presents in their boxes. Like, I just, Paul was like, what have you done? Like, that is such a waste of space. But that's what I, I did that. Yeah, but most don't you of, think... Most of the things. So I left the things in the boxes. Did you do that and took up, like, a whole... Actually, two suitcases. Do you know what you should do? And I see someone had done it recently. Is they done a Christmas at home... They basically was going away at Christmas and said that Santa was visiting all the children going abroad early in their in at home. And then when they got abroad, you know, he, they got another little something. I think that's a really good idea. We we kind of did do a bit of both, but Father Christmas, but we did do like a little pre-Christmas thing at home, but Father Christmas did bring their presents to the Maldives. I even took I even took mince pies out with me. I took a box of mince pies with me. That is hilarious. Well, they didn't have any they couldn't make you up a little pie on the island. <laughs> well no, I just thought I'm gonna take them because you don't know if you wanted to have take the classic Marx's mince, mince pies. <laughs> that's what I did. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Actually to be fair, remember when Edward had really bad eczema, I bottled up seawater and brought that home with me. <laughs> The things we do. From Mallorca, I had like two glass bottles and brought water home with me, seawater. No, so on on Christmas Day, Greg and Louis, like um, my brother-in-law, so Francesca's husband, Greg's sister's husband, 
Um, so we bought out, I posted on my Instagram, you know, Greg in the Grinch outfit. Yeah. So when we bought that outfit, we also bought like an elf outfit as well. So on Christmas Day, right, me and, no, sorry, yeah, me and Cheska, Linda, all the kids were all around the pole. Greg and Louie went off back to the room. We, we took the outfits with us, right? All of a sudden, Greg and Louie come running down the beach in the Grinch and the elf outfit. They come God. running up. The pot, right, you can imagine it, it was packed. Like, everyone oh was just gosh. looking, like as if to say, "What on earth?" Are I these think I saw doing? a video of Margot crying. Like you, you grab Margot. <laughs> yeah, Margot cried again. Again, she didn't like the costume. She doesn't like the green. And um, but it was so, it was so random. You know, like they just done it, and it, everyone was just looking at them. And then they didn't know what to do, and then they just run back to the beach. <laughs> the beach. Yeah, like, because the he can't start smashing up the bar. Like it getting no, he, he like, would, so we had like a little pile of toys like where the kids were playing like round the pool, and he ran over and like pulled the towel off and threw it everywhere. Everyone, I swear to God, everyone was just there was like no noise. <laughs> he he should have just done it when you were all back at the room looking. and like crept up on the kids then. That's what I said. Oh, why so everyone. public? Public, yeah. He doesn't care, does he? <gasps> right. Okay. Oh, so I think. Sorry. Oh gosh. You got a little bit of jet lag, but I oh, know. I'm gonna go and get hot water bottle to this. Zoom meeting in a minute. Oh no, I'm gonna go to this oxygen. I've actually got the day off today. Well, technically, I've got Rosie as well. Um, I'm gonna go to this oxygen place in a bit. It's not far oh, from yeah. me. Sit well, in like a, chamber. a chamber. Yeah, for an hour. And apparently, it's quite good for recovery as well. Like loads of benefits, but apparently, it might help speed along this um, torn t- tear that I've got. But also, um, isn't I like the cold? Them cold machines is that meant to be really good? Well, for they, she said to me to keep it warm, but obviously ice is good for oh, maybe inflammation. Not. So what I've got, she gave me an ice pack like this. It's quite cool actually. I can't explain. Anyway, so she said twenty minutes of ice, twenty minutes of heat, twenty minutes of ice, twenty minutes of heat. Anyway, Lucinda, my friend, she's got one of those ice bath things, like the proper ones. She said, "Come and get in that." I said, "I think because yeah, you sort of hyperventilate a little bit, like." <laughs> That that really hurts yeah. me. So when I yeah. so that hurts me to breathe in like that. So I'm just going to avoid that for now. But when it starts getting better, maybe I will. Because it's hard to breathe anyway. But anyway, yeah, cool. Be better in a few days. I'll be better for your birthday. I hope. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. We will still be able to drink uh, margarita. I'll be able so. to have a drink, but won't be able to do any kind of like uh, activity. Activity. Yeah. I can float about in a hot tub for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay then. Well, have a lovely day. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. Good to be back. I will speak to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.